How did King deal with people who were not committed to nonviolence? With great difficulty. <laughs> like other uh, great leaders, like Gandhi, like uh, Nelson Mandela. I mean, both of them had the privilege of being part of mass movements that were, and the reason why they're mass is because they did attract lots of different types of people who brought different perspectives. That's what made the movements powerful. Um, King or a, a Gandhi um, or a Mandela could not have achieved what they wanted simply by people who were following them. Um, they, they achieved their goal because of many people who ad maybe admired them but didn't necessarily follow their tactics or, or strategies. And, and that's, that was inevitable. I think King, one of the essays that I, I did about King, actually, it's in the congressional record uh, because it was uh, part of my testimony for the King holiday. And I called him a moderating force within the movement. It's, it's a role that most people don't recognize that he played because of this misconception, this mythology that the movement was King and his followers. But once you get beyond that mythology, then you see that one of his great skills is that he was one of the few people who could be admired and listened to by people as diverse as Stokely Carmichael on the one side or the NAACP on the other side, you know, the, the more conservative forces in the movement and the more militant forces in the movement. They, they could all relate to Martin Luther King and he could all, he could relate to them. Uh, when uh, he's challenged by young people promoting the notion of black power, he has a long dialogue with Stokely Carmichael on the Mississippi Voting Rights March. And it's kind of the conversation he never had with Malcolm X. And he has it with Stokely Carmichael, and you see him, how patient he is in terms of trying to engage in this dialogue with someone who respects him but doesn't agree with him. And, you know, of course, Gandhi had to do, deal with people like Nehru, who, um, again, respected him but didn't always agree with him, and, or Menon, or, you know, some of the other people in, in the Indian movement who very strongly disagreed with him. Um, he, he understood that that was part of his role as a leader of trying to persuade people to come to his, his view and persuade people who were not the type who would simply say, well, you know, you're Martin Luther King and I'm going to defer to your judgment on this. Um, that's, that's not the way the movement works. That's not the way any movement, mass movement works. And, um... Only, only in retrospect, only in, in the mythological um, understandings of the movement do we, do we have that, that view. And that's important to keep in mind because many times I've heard people say, if only we had another Martin Luther King. If only we had this great leader, then we would have a great movement. And I think that puts it backwards. I think the great movement creates the great leader. It's the Rosa Parks. It's the four students in Greensboro. It's the Freedom Riders. It's the uh, voting rights um, leaders in the Deep South. It's those people who create the great movement. They're not waiting for instruction. Rosa Parks wasn't sitting on the bus with a cell phone waiting for a call from Martin Luther King. She, she did what she had to do. And I think not many of us can be Martin Luther King. But I think all of us could imagine ourselves being the Rosa Parks or the Four Students or the, you know, a, a Freedom Rider or, you know, just many people who play small roles and maybe in the process of playing a small role might find that they have qualities of leadership that they didn't know they had. 
And I, and I can see that with, with Martin Luther King, that he gained confidence in his leadership and he gained an ability uh, that he did not even imagine he had at that point. I think um, it's much more accurate to view him as almost a reluctant leader. One of the volumes of the King Papers is called Call to Leadership. He, he responded to the call that, you know, in many of our lives, we, we have this moment where someone says, you know, here's this, here's this movement, we need you. And we can either say, well, you know, I've got a final the next day, or I've got, uh, I've got these other responsibilities, and I just, I just don't have the time, or whatever. Or we can say, I'm not sure if I can be of great use to you, but I'm willing to do what I can. And out of that second group come great leaders. <laughs> <laughs>